In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about progesterone and address a misconception that usually comes up in its use. See, one of the trends that I've noticed with, especially with OBGYNs, is that their recommendations for progesterone usually is limited to a patient needing it to oppose estrogen. See, when you put a patient on estrogen replacement for menopausal hormone therapy, then you're essentially using progesterone to counterbalance the effects of estrogen at the uterine lining level. What that means is that estrogen or estradiol is a growth hormone. So it really increases the lining of the uterus um, and it promotes its growth. And progesterone helps to counteract that and ensure that a precancerous or cancerous situation does not result from estrogen use. So a lot of OBGYNs will give progesterone to a patient if they've prescribed them estradiol and if they have a uterus. So then logic, their logic then dictates that if you don't have a uterus, if you've had a hysterectomy done, then and you're using estrogen in that situation, then you don't need progesterone. And that's a misconception that I would like to address because that limits progesterone's use to only the opposition of estrogen at the level of the uterus. And that's not the case. We know very well that progesterone actually has receptors all around the body, uh, and especially in the brain, and it has many, many uses beyond just opposing estrogen at the uterine lining level. So let me just back up once and talk a little bit about bioidentical progesterone versus synthetic progestins, because this is something that every single time I talk about this, this needs to be addressed because in the medical world and even in the patient world, there is a big misconception that these two things are interchangeable and a, you know, a progestin is the same thing as a progesterone. But there is a fundamental difference between the two. So when we say bioidentical progesterone, or when we say progesterone with an O-N-E at the end, we are talking about the exact same hormone that women have in their bodies, and that's what we're looking to replace without any chemical alteration. There are other formulations of, of this, which is uh, what's called progestogens. In other words, these are molecules that are similar to progesterone, but they have a change in their molecular structure and become entirely different hormones then. So think about if you've heard of levonorgestrel, norethindrone, medroxyprogesterone, acetate. These are not progesterones. These are synthetic progestins with INS at the end. And they are fundamentally different from bioidentical progesterone. And we have seen that in many, many studies. And so the first thing that we have to do is differentiate between these two and talk about which one are we using. For me, bioidentical progesterone is always should be the treatment of choice when you're talking about a progesterone. Um, obviously, there are contraceptive uses for progestins, and that is a difference between the two. But when you're talking about using it for a fundamental purpose in the body, for hormone balancing, for um, perimenopause, menopause, uh, hormone replacement, it's very important to think and use bioidentical progesterone. Um, so that's the difference between the two. So what I'm trying to address here is that the need for progesterone goes beyond just using it in combination with estrogen or estradiol. It really should be considered in women that are perimenopausal, um, that again, they're having some hot flashes, night sweats, they're having irregular cycles, they're having heavy bleeding, they're having clots, they're having uh, poor sleep, anxiety. These are all symptoms that can be accompanied with a low progesterone state that tends to happen later on in life. And obviously, when we talk about menopause, we're talking about the cessation of those female hormones. So there's a more of a clear cut need for it at that time. So, and then there are other premenopausal states as well that might need progesterone too, which don't get talked about a lot. But again, there are certain conditions that need that as well. So the point is that bioidentical progesterone should be considered for women 
throughout um, their journey of perimenopause and into menopause. And it should not depend on their uterus condition. It should not depend on estradiol either. Of course, you need progesterone if you're uh, using estrogen and you have a uterus, you need it. But my point is that it has benefits such as receptors in the brain, which improve um, things like sleep, improve things like um, anxiety. And there are thousands and thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of women that can testify to the benefits of progesterone on all of these other symptoms that they went through, hot flashes, night sweats as well. So I wanna make sure that progesterone gets its attention and not just estrogen being thought of as the hormone replacement therapy of choice with progesterone acting as a Robin to the Batman. So that's very important. Um, the Lastly, there's a, a, a bigger question around how should we give progesterone? Um, that's something that we can probably address in a different video. But in short, you can use oral progesterone, you can use vaginal progesterone, you can use uh, progesterone in a cream form. Um, I think that most of the time, oral is definitely the preferred choice. And the reason for that is because when you take progesterone orally, it tends to have, it, it goes through the gut and the liver. And that metabolism that it goes through tends to produce um, a lot of, or several um, metabolites like allopregnanolone and several others that are very beneficial from those things that I just mentioned, sleep, anxiety, and other um, hormone related issues and other symptoms that uh, a woman goes through. So very important to understand that um, oral is the preferred method. Uh, some women may not tolerate it well, in which case vaginal or cream um, can be considered. That's obviously part of a longer uh, conversation. So I wanna correct this misnomer that if you don't have a uterus, you don't need progesterone. I think that that's very wrong and I think it limits what women are able to receive in terms of care and uh, treatment options when it comes to their hormone symptoms.